Right guys, in today's video I'm going to explore if there is a way to force a GTX 1650 that has dynamic boost to uh, constantly run at 65 watts as opposed to 50 watts. And the way we'd actually do this is by going into device manager, going under software devices and disabling NVIDIA platform controller. So this is going to disable dynamic boost. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use an older driver, 528.02, because once you open up MSR Afterburner, it enables you to change the power limit. So what we're doing here is we're disabling NVIDIA platform controller and framework. And then you'll notice that in the NVIDIA control panel, it, um, the option to enable dynamic boost will fall out of the NVIDIA control panel because you're disabling NVIDIA platform controller. And the reason we're doing that is to enable us to see if we can dynamically boost or force um, the GPU wattage to sit at the maximum amount of 65 watts as opposed to 50 watts for a GTX 1650 laptop. So anyways, I already did the test, I got my results and yeah, uh, didn't quite work that way. And let me just show you quickly. So the game that I actually got the best result or the, the most wattage for my GPU was God of War. Um, okay, so I did, I was using a recording GeForce experience. So I did take some of my wattage, but generally God of War, um, I got to boost to 60 watts. Um, but did that make a difference to performance? No, it actually reduced stability and I only got 60 watts and you'll notice that my GPU temp and my CPU temp went up by about five to seven degrees because normally I'm getting about 65, 66 on my GPU and about 70 on my CPU. But you can see uh, the, the temperatures are much higher, but the performance is much the same. Even though I'm getting more wattage on my GPU, not really getting extra performance sorry if this uh, video is a little bit um i didn't know what to name this video or what to make the title it was a requested video from a viewer from yesterday but guys before i get to my results please head on over to my homepage. if you're not subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing if you enjoy this type of content for those of you that are subscribed already thank you so much i went over 3000 about two days ago um, please like the video, share the video, comment on the video. And then guys, for those of you that are new to the channel, I do have a whole bunch of optimization videos you can get stuck into here. I did a full GPU optimization video about three or four days ago, a full CPU optimization two days ago, and I have throttle stop, MSI afterburner tutorials on my own page. Guys, for those of you that want support or um, if you got, if you're coming unstuck and you want technical support on discord i do offer that but it's a service so it's subject to five five dollars uh paid by super thanks on youtube and then i'll give you a session of discord support uh that's a new feature i've added to my channel so um yeah if you need discord support uh go and give me a five dollar super thanks payment and then you got me for an hour i'll give you discord support but let's get to those results of the topic of this video so nvidia devices platform controller yet again i didn't know what to call this video or this test so i just put nvidia devices controller dynamic boost on versus off and then i used 528.02 uh, to do the test because obviously the power limit slider was unlocked in 528.02 528.24 and 528.49 and I actually had 528.02 handy, so I just used that driver. Um, this is with uh, just a stock standard normal driver with dynamic boost on. And then this is with that little tweak where I switched off NVIDIA platform controller in device manager. And then um, disabled uh, dynamic boost to see if we can push up that wattage. And then this is just against the most recent driver just to give an idea of what the performance is like. So on the regular 528.02, I did a, a driver comparison the other day. 
the results of a driver are starting to lag behind. Um, when I add up all the average FPS, get to 774. When I add up all the 1% lows, get to 577. When I add up all the 0.1% lows, get to 459. Then when I do the NVIDIA devices platform controller tweak, where I try to get that, uh, to dynamically boost to 65 watts continuously, uh, unfortunately my results weren't that great. When I add up all the average FPS, I get to 778. So over 12 games, I get a full FPS boost, which is negligible. When I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 576. So you can actually see it's one FPS low in terms of 1% lows. And then when I add up all the 0.1% lows, I get to 486. So a slight little boost in 0.1% lows, no boost whatsoever in 1% lows, and four FPS high in average FPS. Um, if you ask me, this is not really something to consider because you're not really getting a performance boost. And also when you compare it against most recent NVIDIA driver, you're getting higher average FPS uh, by default when you're on the latest driver. You're getting much higher 1% lows when you're on the latest driver. You're getting much higher 0.1% lows when you're on the latest driver. So a, a last little test, a nice possibility for extra performance. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out that way. But anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. And as always, guys, for those of you that are watching but you haven't subscribed as of yet, now's the time to do so. It's the weekend. Enjoy it. Have a good one. It's people like you. Cheers.